Right, Charlie, in part one there, you mentioned that uh, Cheltenham. They were living right in the heart of jump racing country, just up the road from Lambourne. Um, now, you, I'm led to believe you were in a syndicate um, with the Sherwoods. Uh, five blokes and a striker with a horse called Vinnie the Hoodie. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about that? Come about, it was, it was obviously there's six of us, and, and like you said, the lads are from, there's four lads from Oxford, one's from Lambourne, uh, and, and me, and it was a friend of mine, Mark O'Hara, um, got in touch and said, look, we'll just get a horse, a jumper. I was like, okay, fine. Um, we got it over in Ireland with Joseph O'Brien at first, uh, which was good fun, and he won over there, and three or four, four run, five runs over there. And it was just like, right, let's try and get, get the horse over here if we can. Um, be easier for us all to, we can see it, and, and it's a lot easier for everybody. Joseph was like, absolutely fine, that is no problem, totally understand, um, and what a top, top bloke he is, by the way. Anyway, the horse went to Oliver Sherwood's, and that's it now, it's in there. With them, them oh, the older fellas, they're, they're great fun, and, and it's an enjoyment, it's an enjoyment for me to have, have with them, and hopefully he can go on and, and progress as a good chaser this year. Now, you guys named the horse yourself? Yeah, I think mean, there's three of us were hod carriers that that was in the in our time, so it just come through there. And he's a Vinnie Rowe, so we just went with that. And one of the one of the fellas is us obsessed with Vinnie Jones, so he, he, that's how it, that's how we went down that down so that he, route. He actually is named after Vinnie. Yeah. Okay, so when was your first involvement in owning horses? I bought a horse. My first one was I was at QPR. It was 2014. For, yeah, 14, I bought a horse for, with John Joe interior minister. At that point, it didn't really work. It didn't work out at the time. We said he was an ex-flat horse, went hurdling, didn't really take to it. And then the horse kind of went down a grade and just moved him on. And then I, I met a guy who's now is now my best friend, Paul Fisher. He was about five, six years ago. Then we um, was at a wedding and he said to me, oh, look, I've got this, this horse you'd like to be involved in. 7,000 in for a leg. I was like, yeah, okay, fine. So it's me, him, his dad, and the trainer, Warren Greytrex. Fine. And she went and um, she went in one first time out for us at, at Worcester. And um, that's her when she put, she won on Boxing Day. Um, and that was her winning that font well, on Boxing Day. And we went there and she, um, it was great. And that was it, first winner. And it kind of went on. Unfortunately, she, 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 um, the racing career stopped after an injury and then she's been a broodmare for us three times um, and that that was it really that's that's where it kind of went on and it just flowed straight in we liked the jumps and then when the jump season was coming to an end I was thinking well, why don't we just get a flat house and, and we did and got bought uh, Florencio with William Muir for 10,000 and he won two times in his first five starts as a two year old and, and it kind of just snowboarded from there so you started off as well, what you call a lucky owner, really? Yeah, yeah, really. That that was it, and and it was kind of just a. You you think a lot of owners go through it for a long time and don't don't really get get a win as such, for years and years. And I, me and Paul was quite fortunate with our with our first jumper. Okay, so now you you've actually gone into it the business way, set up XO Racing. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about that? That's Again, it was, it was kind of Paul's idea, brought it to me and, and said, should we go down the syndicate route? I think it's very affordable for, for people to get into into racing, very similar to how we, we did with, with our Miss Sophie Rose. Uh, and that was it, really. It kind of expanded. Florencio was the first one. So sold all, all the shares in him and, and we had great fun. And then the owners asked if we could get get another one and, and we did. Then we went and got another horse and, and more owners. We was attracting more more business as such. Um, it was a great way to meet new people. It really was um, to share that excitement and and the disappointment because let's be honest, there's a lot of disappointment in this game as well. But it was something that I truly be believed in. I think it's a, it's a great way to get people into a sport, and I and I think there, there should be more. And it should be more, it's a great affordable way to to get into racing because I've got to be honest, it is an expensive game. No, I was going to ask about that. Because why you would get involved with the syndicate? So it's the um, you like the the fact that you do things on a social level. Mm. You know, like I say, share the disappointment, yeah. and the excitement is better than just being a solitary. Of course, it is. Um, on them long 
pulls on them long when I'm at training pulls on them long journeys up to Wolverhampton or on the way home and then I see his excitement when we have Crown Eagle was running over in Italy when he went and, and with other owners so, so when we have other horses that go to go to Wolverhampton that, that run below par and he's driving back to me disappointed on the phone and, and he's he's just spoke to six other owners that are exactly the same uh, it is easy as much you got to take their their the rough with the smooth you've got to take their their disappointment as well like because you feel like you you've got to do that um it is much much better i think like we'd all like to be stood picking up the trophy of winning a group one or or winning a, a great grade one chase or something like that on your own look at me kind of thing but the excitement to have 10 15 other people with you with, and, and share that is it's like having a party i guess okay another thing i noticed when i was doing my doing my research you you do employ several trainers rather than just stick to one or two. Yeah. Um, is that for the same reason? Um, I think so. I kind of just really fell into it, I guess. Our first one was with, with Warren Gray, Tretz the Jumper. Then we had one with Willie Muir because it was, it was Lambourne. And I kind of knew, knew Willie and, Ma and Martin Dwyer. Um, and it kind of just went from there. Then George Scott got in touch with us and approached Paul about getting a, getting a horse there. And we did. And it was kind of the same with Marco Botti. And kind of went round the round the houses with with all these trainers, um, and kind of just found our way. It was miles better just to move everything out. And then last year, the closest trainer to me, Richard Allen, and I finally um, got four horses in there with him. So would would each trainer have their sort of special attributes? You think that they? I'd say so. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, of course they do. Everyone has their own. That's what makes every trainer different, don't they? That's what makes everyone everyone different. Um, the biggest thing now, I do find the biggest thing, you have to train you have trained the horses and, and supply them and, and give them the best chance of what they got. But the communication is massive because you find that I think if you you've got a horse there that's not running for two, three, four months, if you don't hear from that certain trainer, you can certainly be out, feel like you're out. And, oh, I don't feel appreciated here. And then you've got a syndicate that you're running, and you've got say fifteen other owners that are in the that are in the horse. Then they we're not really hearing anything like that. So I do feel now the way the, the way the world's gone, the way technology's gone, trainers now can inform you a lot better, and that goes a long way than than making phone calls and 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 being appreciative towards you yourself being an owner at their yard. So how do you get your owners? Are you your word of mouth. I said, yeah, you? word of mouth. I guess word of mouth and winners obviously help. Um, word of mouth people enjoying the experience what, what we kind of give them the the kind of the feedback the the attention to detail kind of thing that, that they get and at the end there's it's just luck I guess if you're involved in one if you're if you go into a syndicate and two three three horses that you're involved in you, it's not going going great and then all of a sudden you see another syndicate there that you can oh do you know what I'm just going to chance me on in there for similar price or a little bit less or a little bit more then then they can just go off there otherwise just people get involved with us first time the owners at Florencia I think we had tw 20 owners in Florencia and I think still to this day now I think we I think we have about 15 of them still on the on the books that was in there involved in Florencia the first day okay can it be difficult like you say you need patience a lot of disappointment can you get be, be difficult if you get a I say a bad apple that comes in and once everything will happen immediately and isn't happy and you know do you have to try and whittle those out to keep the harmony for the rest of the people we have to whittle them out but ideally you have to manage the situation that's what it is it's like a management thing you're managing the scenario you're managing the other you have one bad apple and 15 people you've got to manage the other 14 to, to the, the, for them to realize he's he's going way over his head and going a bit a bit quick and they want this to happen this to happen and all of a sudden if you don't do that his attitude then rubs off one, two, three, four, and then you've got four people thinking the same as him. When you really know that that must, that's not the way to go. So, how many horses have you got involved at the moment? Fourteen. Yeah, fourteen at the, at the moment. That that we're we're happy with. We sold three at the horses and training sale. Um, yeah, and then obviously the yearling sale for that started this year. But we'll try and try and get them later on in the, in the year, really. And they're all flat horses. Yeah. All, all flat horses that, that's the way it's gone really it was kind of the jump jumps scene was good at the start and give us kind of the platform for it but then we kind of winded off to to go into the flat 
you're not upset your landborn neighbours by ignoring them? No, no, they're, they're all fine. I, I've, the only one we've obviously got in there is a jumper and a different syndicate with the five guys, like you said earlier, was Finney the Hoddy, but the rest of them are, are all flat and, and, and that's it. Everyone seems to be okay at the moment. Everyone seems to be okay. I've just realised I've called him Vinny the Hoodie, it's Vinny the Hoddy. Vinny the Hoddy, that's all right. Sorry about that. That's all right, no problem at all, that's what they all do. That's what they all do.